Okay, this video I made in order to help better understand the flow of blood through the heart and out to the body and the lungs and back through the heart again. This is the diagram of the heart that you will see that hopefully you will understand by the end of this video. But we're going to start off simply with drawing a diagram. And when we draw a diagram, we're going to do this in five different steps or five different levels. So the first level, we're going to draw the four chambers of the heart. We'll label them and we'll include the body and the lungs. The second level, we'll draw the lines that you see here representing this infinity sign that will help you to know how to label it. The third step, or level three, we will include the four valves of the heart, the two semilunars and the two AV valves. Level four, we will label the major blood vessels. After that point, you should be able to answer pretty much any test question relating to blood flow. And then level 5, I put a space there because uh, you don't need that to answer test questions unless there's a diagram of the heart that you need to label. So what you want to start off with first is a simple uh, diagram of the heart. And I just recommend getting a piece of paper and just drawing the heart and then draw a cross or a plus right here in the middle to divide it into the four different chambers. So one of the things you got to decide is what side is the right side and what side is the left side. For example, is this over here, is this the right side or the left side? When you're looking at it here on the screen, it's to your left. But if somebody was to face you, this would be on their right side. So what's the right answer? Is it yours or their way of seeing it? Well, the way to remember this is you don't matter, but the person you're looking at or the patient is the one that matters. So that would make this the right side over here, and that would make this the left side. So we have the right, we have the left, A for atrium, and V for ventricles. More than one atrium, you say atria. Okay, so after that, we got to decide what side to put the lungs and the body on. Well, I'll just tell you first, the lungs go on one side and the body goes over there on the other side. You could do it the other way, but it's going to mess up the lines. However, this is the best way to do it. Here is a way to remember. It would have been nice if you look here, L for left, L for left, if the L for lungs was over here as well too, but it's not. It's just over there on the other side. So you just got to remember the L for lungs is not with the L's on the left side. It's over there. And then that's it for level one. So now we're moving on to the next step, level two. And we're going to draw the lines to connect everything. The pattern you're going to see is this infinity sign that we're drawing here. Somebody told me about this and I really liked it, so I'm incorporating it here into the drawing. So we got our labels, but we got to decide where we're going to start. Where's our first arrow going to go? Well, one way I like to start is inside the heart. Is the blood going to flow from atrium to ventricle or from ventricle to atrium? Well, way to think about this is you get that body picture back out and as you can see the line showing you right now it's flowing from top to bottom so as you see the highlight over there on the left from atria to ventricles the way to think about this one is what's that force that brings everything down to the ground that holds us down here and the reason we're not floating and yes it's because of gravity so gravity is generally going to cause the flow of blood to go from the top down to the bottom of course it's not the only thing but that's just a way to think about it to get started so I'm going to draw our arrows on each side from the right atrium to the right ventricle and from the left atrium to the left ventricle so the next thing is to decide well where are we going to go from there which one am I going to start at the right ventricle or the left ventricle if you notice I made the wall thicker here in the left ventricle the heart is a muscle it's made out of cardiac muscle and just like any muscle for example skeletal muscle the more you go to the gym, the more you lift weights, the more you work it out, the bigger it's going to get. So the left ventricle is working harder. It's working harder because it's pumping its blood to a further distance. So the question is, what's further from the heart? Are the lungs further from the heart? Or is the rest of the body further from the heart? So if I go back to that picture here, you'll see the lungs are right there, right next to the heart. The rest of the body, there's a greater distance that it has to travel. So what's going on is the left ventricle is pumping to the body which is further than the right ventricle when it's pumping to the lungs so it's gonna have a thicker myocardium a thicker muscular muscular layer so the reason I pulled this picture 
up here is one you can see the thicker myocardium of the left ventricle. As well, you see this arrow coming down off the, um, the inferior lateral portion of this ventricle. But if you look here, there's no flow of blood coming out this way. It actually starts over here in the left ventricle, and then it makes its way up and diagonally, almost towards the right atrium. So that's the way the real blood is going to flow in the heart. But when we're looking here for this diagram, the easier thing to do is to just draw out this way, and then later on we could do the real lines. Okay, so let's continue. The next thing we got to think about is which chamber are we going to head to next? Well, we already left one of the four, so we only have three options left. You can do this through a process of elimination. One way is to think, what if I came back to the left side, to the left atrium? Well, look at it. If it went from the body, it would go all the way around to the left atrium, but then it would go back down to the left ventricle and around, and you keep going in a cycle. So then what would the purpose be of the right heart? It would really have no purpose. Okay, let's go from the body now, and let's say we we're going to go from the body down and around, and we're going to go to the right ventricle. If we went to the right ventricle, well, look, we have a problem. Blood's flowing down into it, so we kind of have a head-on-head head -on -head collision right here, so it's not going to work. So our last option is to go up and around and down into the right atrium. And if you follow the black arrow from the right atrium, you'll see it'll take, it, take you down to the right ventricle. From the right ventricle, you're going to flow around to the lungs, and then there's only one chamber left to return to, and that's the left atrium. If you take a look at that design with the arrows, you'll see that infinity sign that you can place over it, which makes it nice and easy for you to draw. So that infinity sign that you've been seeing up there, well, you see it here now. It doesn't matter where you start, infinity has no beginning and no end, but you can go down, up, and around, over, down, up, and around and over. So that's a nice easy way to decide how the arrows are going to go. One more thing is to decide what's the pulmonary circuit and what's the systemic circuit. I put the pulmonary circuit in the blue arrows. The pulmonary circuit starts in the right ventricle, as noted below here. It goes up and around to the lungs, comes back, and the end of the pulmonary circuit is going to be your left atrium. The left AV valve is going to divide it from the systemic circuit. So you're going to start in the left ventricle, and there are left arrows go up and around and the systemic ends over here in the right atrium divided over here by the other AV valve on the right side. Pulmonary, you definitely want to know that word by now. Pulmonary refers to the lungs. Systemic refers to the body. And that's it for the level two. So now we're going to move on to the third level and you heard me starting to talk about the valves so now we're going to get a little bit more in depth into them. So this diagram, you can still draw it out very simple on paper. You just draw your heart, you draw the plus sign right over it, you put the arrows in, and just draw the arrows around like an infinity sign. So it's very easy. You can draw on a test paper when it comes time for an exam. So now we're going to talk about the four valves. As noted down here in the below, you have two AV valves, you have two SL. AV, atrioventricular. They're going to be located between the atrium and the ventricle on each side. SL are the semilunars. Those are going to be the ones leaving from the ventricles going out uh, their respective great vessels. So the first ones we're putting in here, highlighted in purple, are going to be the AV valves. As I mentioned, atrioventricular because they're located between the atrium and the ventricle on each side. The right on the right and the left on the left. The next thing to do is to take these valves and to assign the special names that you'll probably hear more commonly out there in the hospital or clinical setting. There are three names, but you notice there are only two valves. So one of them has two names and one of them has three names. There's bicuspid, mitral, and tricuspid. So another person told me a really nice way to remember what side uh, which of these are on. If you think about math, and you see that triangle show up there. In math, we only have right triangles. We don't have left triangles. So you take right and try. It's telling you that the right AV valve is going to be the tricuspid valve. So the left AV is going to have the other two names. As well, somebody told me if you uh, take a look at the names, you see by, bi, and my, am I here. Tri has the three letters, so it doesn't really go along with them. So by and my, those two are going to go together. They're going to go together on the left side. So our left AV is known as the bicuspid and the mitral. Our right AV is also known as the tricuspid valve. 
So moving on, we'll go to our SL valves. We have a right and we have a left. Again, SL is for semi-lunar valves. But something to take note of here again. As you notice, I'm just drawing a diagram that's going to help you in terms of getting from point A to point B to point C of answering questions on an exam. Not right now for labeling the regions of the heart. That's going to be level 5. But again, if you look, here's a line, and it's coming out from the lateral portion of the heart, the right ventricle. But over here, you don't see a, a vessel or a space coming out of the right ventricle. It actually goes up and out. So from the right ventricle in the real heart, it goes up and out, and the valve is located right there. So I'm not trying to draw it perfectly, or else I'll draw the valve over here, but things are going to get confusing if I do it that way. So that's why I'm drawing it this way at this point. Again, in the other levels, we'll get to drawing the lines a little bit better. So same thing here with the semi-lunar valves. We need to assign their special names. In this case, there's one for each. There's a pulmonary and there's an aortic. So that's why I stressed before that you remember pulmonary means that we're going to the lungs. So the one that's going over to the lungs, which is going to be on the right side, that's going to be called the pulmonary valve. Also, pulmonic valve is used. And then on the other side, you're going to have your aortic valve because it's going to be uh, part of the aorta. So now your diagram should start to look like this. You have the infinity sign placed over the chambers. You also have your four valves. If you're drawing this on a piece of paper, you can just draw a circle and fill it in or an oval and fill it in and just label your valves. But also try to always remember the names of your other valves. For example, the left AV is also known as the bicuspid or the mitral. The right AV is also known as the tricuspid. So when it comes time to an exam, you're not worried about looking or thinking about the answer. The answer is already going to be written for you on your diagram. So that's it for level three. Now this is the last level before I have some questions ready for you. We're going to include the blood vessels now, the major ones. When you're talking about the cardiovascular system and you hear arteries and you hear veins and you hear vessels, sometimes vessels and veins get confused. Arteries and veins are subgroups to vessels. So an artery is a vessel and a vein is a vessel. What's the difference between arteries and veins? Well, they always say A for arteries, A for away. Away from what? As it's written down there, away from the heart. So anything that's going to be an artery is going to pump blood away from the heart. Anything that's a vein is going to bring blood back to the heart. Now there's another word I hope you guys remember that means to the lungs, and that's pulmonary. So pulmonary arteries are the ones going to the lungs, away from the heart, and pulmonary veins are the ones that are going back. You will see the difference in color why I did that in a moment. And then over on the other side, you have the aorta, which is going to be the big vessel pumping blood out of the left ventricle. And then you have blood coming back to the right atrium on the superior and inferior vena cava. If you're talking about one, such as superior, you would say superior vena cava. If it's the other one, inferior vena cava. And I pronounced it incorrectly right when I first said it. But if you're saying more than one, you would say superior and inferior venae cavi. You would put an E at the end of each of those A's. It would be V-E-N-A-E and -E C-A-V-A-E. -A -A -E. Anytime you see that A and the E at the end, it's a plural, and you just don't pronounce that A. So you go straight to the E. Okay. So another thing you can add into here is the pulmonary trunk. If you look at the diagram of the real diagram, the real drawing of the heart, you'll see the right, right ventricle. The blood goes up through the pulmonary trunk and then branches out. I use these words trunk and branch because think about a tree. If there's a tree, you have one big trunk and then there's branches that come off the tree. As you see here, the arteries as well uh, become two on each side. So that's what I'm drawing here. Is here's the big pulmonary trunk and then you're getting the branches off the tree trunk which are going to be your pulmonary arteries. So this is why I changed the colors is because I'm talking about oxygen level. Usually if you look at the veins on your hand, you look at the veins and you'll see your veins have more of a bluish color. Blue doesn't mean that it's a vein. As you notice up at the top left it says pulmonary vein is O2 rich. There's more of a bright color when hemoglobin binds to oxygen, a more bright red color. So they draw uh, anything that's rich in oxygen with a red color. But look, pulmonary vein, and it's rich. Why is this O2 rich? Well, travel back a little. 
bit and you'll notice that it's coming from the lungs. The lungs is our source of oxygen. So anything coming after that is going to be oxygen rich. Anything heading to the lungs is going to be oxygen poor. You might hear the word deoxygenated, but what does D mean? D means without, but it's not actually without oxygen. It comes back to the alveoli with at least 40 millimeters of mercury of pressure of oxygen, which I'll show you in a picture in the next slide. However, it's better to get used to saying oxygen poor instead of deoxygenated because it's just poor. It has 40 versus after it has a little bit over 100, about 104 millimeters of mercury of oxygen. So it's going oxygen rich. It's going into the left atrium through the valve and out. And why or what's the purpose of the oxygen is we want to deliver it to the cells of the body so we can provide them the nourishment that they need. And then the body uses that oxygen. So it's going to become oxygen poor. So we're going to drop down from the 104 to about 40. And we're going to go back to pick up from the lungs again. And the reason that you see here is you have two pulmonary uh, arteries, actually you have four, two to each side, is because you have a branch to the right side and you have a branch to the left side as well. And then down here you have your pulmonary and systemic circuits. So using this diagram, you should be able to answer many exam questions dealing with blood flow. This is just what I was talking about showing you here that this is the basically the capillaries around the alveoli and they're coming in with about 40 millimeters of mercury of oxygen so it's not deoxygenated it's just oxygen poor and then after it picks up it becomes oxygen rich about 104 millimeters of mercury of pressure of oxygen so here are some questions now the first question blood returning to the heart from the systemic circuit first enters the well you gotta think what is the systemic circuit it's not the pulmonary circuit. Pulmonary means lungs, so systemic means the body. So you could pause this video and think about it before you see the answer. But you go back to your drawing, and it's blood coming back from the body. So coming back from the body, we're going to go here, superior, inferior, uh, vena cava, and then to the right atrium. Let's see if there's one of those things available. Okay, well, we don't see a superior or an inferior vena cava but we do see the right atrium, so it's going to be that one. Okay, the second question. The right ventricle pumps blood to, look at your choices here, uh, you see some structures uh, just to keep in mind. Again, you can pause this and think about it and go back to your diagram and look before you see the answer. But we go back to the diagram of the right ventricle and it's pumping out, it's going out the right SL valve and over to the lung. So let's see if one of those choices is back in that question. As well, I just want to note here that there are valves between the chambers. So when you're going from atria to ventricle, you cross a valve. And then when you're leaving the ventricles, there's a valve. But there isn't a valve when you enter the heart. So in between rooms or chambers, you have valves. And then when you leave the chambers or the rooms, you have valves. So let's go back here to number two. And you will see here, <coughs> excuse me, you would see here the lungs, the right and the left lungs. Let's do two more questions. Blood flowing into the heart from the vena cavi flows next through the what valve? So blood flowing into the heart. So we're going to go in the heart. We're going to be coming back on either vena cava. So what's it next going to go through? So we look at the choices. We see a bunch of valves. So we're going to see what's the first valve that we're going to hit. Again go back to your diagram. Okay, Here's the vena cava. It's coming back here. Okay, We didn't hit a valve when we came in. Remember when you go in you don't hit a valve. But the next valve we're going to hit here is the right AV. So let's go to our choices. Again pause this so you can think about it. We don't see the right AV so you got to remember what's the right AV? Is it bicuspid? Is it tricuspid? Is it mitral? Well by my those are the same thing so you cross those out. It's not a semilunar, it's an AV, so you could get tricuspid, or you can remember right side, right triangle, so it's going to be a tricuspid. One more question. The something valve prevents backward flow into the left atrium. The something valve prevents backward flow into the left atrium. So let's go back to our diagram. All right, well, we need a valve, and it has to be between the atrium and then the ventricles. 
So it's got to be this valve. It's preventing the backflow. Because remember, these valves are one way, so it's got to go down this way. If it goes back, it's regurgitation and you get heart murmurs. So this is the valve we're looking for, the left AV. But we know there could be other choices. So let's go and look at what we have here. We have bicuspid, we have tricuspid, semilunar. Well, we said the right is the tri, so the left is going to be the bi or the mitral. Mitral's not up there, so it's going to be the bicuspid valve. And that's it for level four, and that should definitely help you with answers in a test in terms of blood flow, which way the blood is going to go through next and which valves. Also, you could ask more questions in terms if we go back and look at the diagram here. We can go back and ask, well, which one's oxygen poor? Which one's oxygen rich? But you got to reason it out. If you went to the lungs, you picked up oxygen. And you don't really lose a lot of it until you hit the body tissues and cells. So then it becomes poor after that. So the next part here, I made a space because, again, you can answer questions dealing with the physiology here. Level 5 is dealing more of the anatomy, taking this diagram that we did and connecting it to the diagram of the heart. All right, so let's go on to level five and compare the diagram that we drew to a real life diagram of the heart. So we're gonna take this diagram, I'm gonna put it side by side by the real diagram until you're able to learn the real diagram and label it. And one thing is do what we did in the beginning, start with labeling the chambers. Well, you see right atrium and below it is right ventricle. Go over to the other side, right atrium, there's our right ventricle. Again, go back left atrium, left ventricle. Over in the diagram of the heart, left atrium, well that is the left ventricle. And you can see the arrows going down on both sides from atrium to ventricle, just like we have over here in our diagram. And it's going to cross the AV valves. The AV valves on each side are these parachute looking structures right here in white, and then the other one over there. So it's going to go down and through those valves. Now what changes here is if you see in the diagram that we drew, we drew that the blood's coming out of the side of the heart. But it doesn't come out of the side of the heart. If you notice, once it goes into the ventricle, it actually goes up diagonal underneath the pulmonary trunk and up and out of the aorta. So it actually goes up and out that way. If you want, you can start drawing your lines that way. It's personal preference at this point. So it goes up, out to the rest of the body. When it comes back to the body, as you notice here, it comes back on the superior and inferior vena cava. Well, you need a superior, which means up, and an inferior, which means down. We could say this arrow is the up one. We could maybe add another arrow right here and say that's the bottom one. So superior and inferior uh, vena cava, which would be these structures right here. And you know it's them because they're leading back into the right atrium. Right atrium, we cross the right AV valve, also known as the tricuspid valve. And then going back to our diagram, we're drawing it coming out of the side of the heart. But there's nothing coming out of the side of the heart. Just like the other ventricle, it goes up and diagonal out the pulmonary trunk and then branches to your pulmonary arteries going to your lungs, just like we drew here. Pulmonary trunk, then pulmonary arteries to the lungs. And that's going to be coming back on the pulmonary veins. And they're red because they're oxygen rich, even though they are veins, and back to the left atrium and starting over again. And you can see your pulmonic valve over here because when you leave the ventricle, you're going to cross a valve just like we drew over on this side. You leave the ventricle, you're going to cross a valve. The aortic one is usually hidden in many diagrams. There's a little piece of it down right in there that they're labeling. Some diagrams move it a little bit so you can see it better and they put it uh, right up in here. But that's pretty much the final level here and that should help you when you're in a lab and you have to label the actual diagram of the heart. And if you want, there's good videos that you can watch here. And I just took this off of a real nice one on YouTube. So I'll let you watch it and hopefully it makes sense now. The heart is a pump which must circulate blood through two different but interconnected vascular systems. The smaller of these systems is the pulmonary system. Blood returning from the upper part of the body is delivered to the right atrium of the heart by the superior vena cava, one of the body's two largest veins, while blood returning from the lower part of the body is delivered to the right atrium by the other major vein, the inferior vena cava. Contraction of the right atrium in each cardiac cycle forces blood into the right ventricle. 
This is followed by contraction of the right ventricle, which pumps blood into the pulmonary artery, sending it on through the blood vessels of the lungs. As the right ventricle contracts and pressure within the right ventricle rises, the tricuspid valve situated at the opening between the right atrium and right ventricle shuts, preventing any backflow. The pressure generated by contraction of the right ventricle soon opens the pulmonary valve and blood enters the circulation of the lungs. After passing through the circulation of the lungs, the blood, having been recharged with oxygen and having rid itself of carbon dioxide, is returned through the pulmonary veins to the left atrium. The left atrium, too, contracts, forwarding blood into the left ventricle in order to fill it before it contracts. As the powerful left ventricle contracts, the mitral valve shuts, preventing backflow into the left atrium. The aortic valve opens and blood is forced into the aorta, which distributes it to the rest of the body apart from the lungs. As the contraction comes to an end and pressure in the aorta falls, the aortic valves snap shut to prevent back. So hopefully this video control. helps in this uh, animation. So what you want to do is maybe when you watch these videos is to slow them up. Go back, start in the right atrium, put it in your mind, see that diagram in your mind from the right atrium, what are we going to go into next? Oh, from atrium into ventricle, etc.